Okay, so we're live, Prabhu. Narayan Prabhu, welcome to our Sunday Zoom meeting. Rupa Manjari and Mohit Prabhu, thank you for joining. Rupa Manjari Prabhu will read your quote that you sent uh, to uh, to us via email. So let me share the screen. And here we go. So this is a letter to Mukunda, New Vrindavan, June 10th, 1969. Rupa. Can you start reading this wonderful uh, email that you sent? Okay. You are correct when you say that when the spiritual master speaks, it should be taken that Krishna is speaking. That is a fact. A spiritual master must be liberated. It does not matter if he has come from Krishna Loka or he is liberated from here, but he must be liberated. The science of how one is liberated is explained above. But when one is liberated, there is no need of distinction whether he has come directly from Krishna Loka or from the material world. But in the broader sense, everyone comes from Krishna Loka. When one forgets Krishna, he is conditioned. When one remembers Krishna, he is liberated. I hope this will clear up these points. I hope this will meet you in good health. Jai. I wish your AC Bhaktivedanta Swami. Excellent. So this is a letter from Srila Prabhupada to Mukunda, New Vrindavan, June 10th, 1969. Okay. So he's saying you are correct when you say that the spiritual master speaks. It should be taken that Krishna is speaking. So here Srila Prabhupada is referring to the spiritual master who is a liberated soul. He's not talking about some voted in spiritual master by the unelected GBC. Right when 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 we use the word spiritual master, we mean a liberated soul, uttama adhikari. Right. Yeah. We, we don't mean that many many gurus that are appointed and. Well, yeah, right. Because where do those gurus get? Where do the gurus get spiritual authority? Yes. They they are appointed by a non-elected group of people who have no spiritual particular spiritual authority. Yes, you could say in the GBC, hundred of them or whatever there is, that some of them might have some spiritual authority, but then some of them will not have spiritual authority. But the body is what the body of that group is what votes for the gurus. That means they're voted in essentially by secular means. No, you said some of them have spiritual authority. What do you mean by spiritual well, authority? Well, I mean they may be more more than average spiritual events. They're not liberated liberated souls. Okay, There's nobody, yeah. nobody is a liberated soul. Frankly, if there were a liberated soul, they wouldn't tolerate the GBC having taken over its gun. Yes, even if there were liberated souls, how would they be regulated? You know, they will be regulated according to what they think and how they feel. The GBC will be regulating them. So a liberated soul will not be regulated at all. Yeah. So the thing is that it's gone forcibly took over. The, I mean, the GBC forcibly took over, over uh, the role of, and called it GBC. They could call it something else. If they yes. used three other, uh, three other letters, <laughs> yes. uh, then, then people could do something about it. But because it's GBC, they said, oh, Prabhupada created GBC. Just like... Uh, just like the Russians, they have the socialist republic based on Karl Marx. But if you read Karl Marx and look at Russia, there's no similarity at all. Yeah. But they use the word socialist. They use the word socialist republic so that people will feel they belong to something. But that does not give them any authority from Karl Marx. Karl Marx's philosophy was very different than the Russians. If you read his writing, the end of his writing is that from each according to his ability to each according to his need. That is more like Ramaraja than it is like Soviet Russia. So Karl Marx got dragged into the idea of communism when communism means from each according to his ability to each according to his need. So real communism is good. And guess where Prabhupada created real communism? He said, Dhaba Ashram is real communism. 
meaning from each according to his ability to each according to his need. Okay, let's come back to this here. Thank you, Narayan Prabhu. Okay. For speaking that. So I was that, going to give one more element to it, but this here, Srila Prabhupada says that is a fact. He's saying, you are correct. When you say the spiritual master speaks, it should be taken that Krishna is speaking. That is a fact. Then Prabhupada says, the spiritual master must be liberated. Okay. So, so far, after all the experience in this 52 years of experiencing out of 10,000 years, we, we have the experience of not of everyone trying to become the next guru and nobody having the qualification to do it. Yes. They're just they're just making fools of themselves. And expensively, because it's at the expense of the devotees of the temples. Yeah, this has done a lot of damage also to the movement because when a person surrenders, we can see the conditioned soul surrenders, they surrender wholeheartedly. And many of them give their life savings, give their life to their spiritual master and then once the spiritual master seemingly you know he's he's not liberated soul but somehow or other he's carrying on but when the gross deviation and subtle deviation is exposed it's very damaging to their students you know their disciples very and, much so and uh, it's very very uh you know it's disgusting to say the so least you can be more accurate to say that these type of spiritual masters aren't really spiritual masters. They're, as defined in Shastra, they're priests yes. of, a, of a religion, religious priests. Yeah. And, the G, and the GBC is, does, declares itself to be the ultimate ecclesiastical authority of ISKCON, meaning that they are more than just priests. They are somehow empowered by God to select gurus. But where did Prabhupada ever give them that power? The power Prabhupada gave the GBC was to be elected, temple president elected for three-year term that's renewable. Prabhupada didn't create a theocracy. He created a republic, meaning that the, um, the, the GBC, every three years elected, formed a representational government within its God similar to the Congress, the, similar to the Sen Senators Senate of the United States. So uh, every four years they elect, and the purpose of the Senate is to represent the states. Each yeah. state is represented in that group. So that's what the GBC does. You create 12 GBC who are representing their own temples and representing the temples that they can influence so that is the, the purpose is to create a harmony and a cooperation as the United States has with all these 48, 52 states or whatever it is. They they've created it in such a way that they all work together up until recently, but they all tend to work together for the common good. And that's what Prabhupada created the GBC to do. So here, Srila Prabhupada, well... Now, when Prabhupada says spiritual master must be liberated, people who are reading Srila Prabhupada's books and they're reading uh, whatever Krishna conscious guidance they're getting, do they understand the fact that spiritual master must be liberated? Well, where we were talking about GDC, now we're talking about spiritual master? No, I'm saying the people who are students of Srila Prabhupada, who have taken this non-liberated... Oh, let's just clear, clear the decks. Prabhupada did not make such an arrangement. As far as I can see, Prabhupada is the spiritual master for the next 10,000 years. Why should we worry about imposters coming in and simply acting as business managers for the GBC? It's not imposter. not representing Prabhupada. No, I'm saying that they are coming in, and are they teaching? There are people. It doesn't who... matter. They they don't belong there. So you so you're saying that whatever they have in the present. I mean, anything that these people that come in to initiate can offer can be offered without them becoming gurus. They can just be 
senior disciples sitting in the temple room without the majesty, without the money, without anything. Hi. I mean, if, if somebody knows more than somebody else as a devotee, it's their Krishna conscious duty to share that with the person. He doesn't have to sit on a chair and be worshipped to do that. I mean, I think we need to stop concerning ourselves with ISKCON gurus because they don't have any standing. They, they don't belong. If you, but let me ask you a question. If you were able to take away the GBC, how much authority would the ISKCON gurus have? Taking the authority of the GBC? Well, you that is a good... You just get rid of the GBC, then how much authority does the guru have? None at all. Why not? Because they have no basis. What is the basis? They have no basis. What would be the basis? Prabhupada in the center, and no, they're no. kicked out. The basis that these gurus are operating on is the G GBC. If you take away the GBC, they're completely out to lunch. They have no, they have no authority. For that to happen, the masses of people need to be what? Need to understand what Prabhupada exactly wanted and what is well, the qualifications of, of the guru. And they want whatever Prabhupada wanted may or may not impress them. Why not? Because that's been going on for a long time. People say we want what Prabhupada wanted for decades. What we need to do is expose the GBC for the crimes they have committed. Right. You know, if a if a group is becomes exposed like the mafia for crimes, who is going to want to be initiated by one of the people they send out to initiate? Just the people who want to be a mafia themselves? Yeah, but if the G mafia is exposed enough, it, even if 20 temples became completely free from the GBC and independently incorporated and um, independently incorporated and, um, um, and autonomous, the, what could the GBC do? If the population doesn't want them, what can they do? Nothing at all. Yeah, so my recommendation is turn the population of ISKCON, meaning the ISKCON devotees, Turn them against the GBC because the GBC are cheaters, liars, criminals, and murderers of the same guru that we all wish to worship. That's why I'm they saying here that they need worship. to be, uh, they need to know exactly what is the qualification and what Prabhupada wanted for the GBC. Oh, yes. But, That's what I'm saying. Yes. They but need to be educated. Before, or they need to take before that will have any, in their own hands. Before that, that won't gain much traction until we have exposed the GBC as criminals. Yes. If we can expose them all over the internet as criminals, listing their crimes and how they illegally took over ISKCON from Prabhupada, even when he was there in 1970, and how they then went on to poison him to death. Yeah. Think that if that is a big, if that's the news on the newspaper, the innocent ordinary people, meaning the, the rank and file devotees, reading that newspaper will say, "Good God, I don't want to be part of that. Why should why should those people have control over me?" See, we have to take into account that everyone has free will, and it's not a question of arguing the rhythmic argument. Blah, 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 blah. Big argument. We can't, don't need any argument. All we need to say is the GBC is criminal and we have proof of it. And here it is all over the internet ah. describing who the, the crimes Try. and what they did. Just the molestation of the girl called children should be enough to turn the whole tide. Because even now, the tendency is to hide these things to protect this gun. So you have molestation of children to protect this one. If this gun had been, if the GBC had been elected by the temple presidents, 
then the children going to Gurukula, their temple president would have an eye on them to make sure they were okay. Right? Yeah. And if anything came up, the question, the temple president would go there and beat the crap out of whoever was doing the wrong thing. Child, what then... they do by having unelected GBC is that the unelected GBC forms a clerical body. So the whole job is to protect the image of the clerical body, not the children. So the children are molested as a sacrifice to the clerical body, just as the Catholic Church is now being exposed and has been paying millions and millions and millions of hundreds of millions of dollars because of children molested by the priests. Why were the children molested by the priests? Why didn't anyone object? Because the, the priests were a, um, they were protecting the clergy, not protecting the children. You see? Yeah. So if that comes out that the GBC was protecting themselves, not the children, it will be a horror story. Now you might say, well, won't that destroy ISKCON? That's the argument of the GBC. If you expose anything that happened in, the, in ISKCON, meaning GBC ISKCON, it will destroy ISKCON. But we're saying ISKCON is Prabhupada, the holy name of Krishna, the ISKCON, I-S-K-C-O-N, those six letters, it's those six letters, Srila Prabhupada, Krishna, and that's all. Prabhupada is the effulgent charya. So if he's the effulgent charya for the next 10,000 years, every, can you imagine, a, a ISKCON temple ten, five, 500 years from now, it'll be exactly the same format. It'll be, have elected GBC. It will have the, uh, for, so that they can keep everybody on the same page. It'll be independently incorporated. And it will be with Prabhupada in the center. Say, well, Prabhupada's dead. You can't be put him in the center. And I will say, beg to differ. Why would you say Prabhupada dies when he's from Krishna Loka? Are you going to say that Krishna dies? Krishna came here to earth. Did he die? No, he's still in Krishna Loka. So Lord Chaitanya will be there, whatever. So, so Prabhupada can be the living guru. And you don't need another guru. Yeah. What is the other guru going to do? Except cheat you. <laughs> Prabhupada says here multiple times the spiritual spiritual master must be liberated. A spiritual master must be liberated. It does not matter if he has come from Krishna Loka or he is liberated from here, but he must be liberated. He says here. Are you but, right? Yes, no. Mohit Prabhu. Yes. But when you guys say this, that uh, there have been various cases and these uh, cases are worse, right? molestation cases. These cases have been out, bro. Then also people are following, right? I mean, you can check on YouTube. Uh, go check BBC Australia. Go check any YouTube channel. I mean, any news channel. They've taken the, all the coverage and they've asked people, those who have survived, those who have suffered. Then also they follow Krishna consciousness from outside, but they don't uh, keep their children on this, on, in those, uh, what do you call it, gurukulas. Right, so people know it now. So, bro, when people know it, then also they are following. Uh, do you have any answer for that? Because they want Krishna consciousness, right? So you're saying that even though know. you're saying though but even no. though people know about the child molestation and the things That's that are true. done by the leaders of modern day ISKCON, they still send the children to the gurukuls. Not to Gurukulas, but they know these things, right? What Narayan Prabhu is saying, that has been broadcasted on various big channels, news channels have covered it, right? Uh, ah. You just go simply jo, go, just go simply on YouTube and search, right? You'll get uh, various news channels covering it, right? So people know it, right, Prabhu? People have uh, known it for several years, but they want to be into Krishna consciousness, so they they don't have any option and then they follow, right? So well, that's, that's because the that's all there is. What we're doing is say, take away, rip away the, the curtain. That curtain is the GBC. There's the so curtain. The curtain and you can have right. all the ISKCON gurus on that curtain also saying insufficient guidance. Insufficient guidance. Where is the curtain has guidance? been removed. People know so each and everything. They all, everything except Prabhupada from the as the guru. 
Mohit Prabhu was saying Mohit. something. Go ahead, Mohit Prabhu. Because the curtain has been moved, right? The curtain has been moved. People know the reality. People know everything. Then also, uh, I mean, they say this, that if once a uh, spiritual master has fallen, it's okay. He has accepted his mistake. Ne- next time it won't happen, right? Why, no, people how then did follow and then it runs. Yeah. But how, how did he become spiritual master? God knows. Well, then also people are following, right? Because they don't have any option. Because once they've, uh, they are they in the person of God, they have to go back, right? They, the people can worship Prabhupada, not the spiritual master. Is there a reason why they should choose a spiritual master who's imperfect over Prabhupada, who is perfect? Yeah, that's a very you know, good question. Yeah. Yeah, supposing. But Mohit's that, argument is that even though there is all the scandals have been broadcast in life, people still default to worship of insufficient people and insufficient management. Well, of course. What's the alternative? <laughs> they don't know any alternative. Maybe that's, that's because, because exactly. That, it is yeah. us that need to create the alternative. Jai. Yeah. Jai. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the alternative, so, they have no idea because many people are joining ISKCON. Well, after... They think that Prabhupada died and now who's the next guru? Yes. <laughs> and so essentially exactly. I like to compare it to the, their materials. So yeah. my idea is if grandfather dies and leaves a fortune, how, how much of that can I get for myself? You're not worried about uh, grandfather. You don't care that he died. You just want to see how much of his Inheritance you can get, but bro, most of the escort that's, material, that, that's materialism. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yes, but, the Vaishnav doesn't think like that. But yeah, most of the people there, bro, they they say that guru is very important. You guys are bogus. Yeah, guru I is mean, very they, important. Guru is essential, but who is the guru? Yes, that's they the point. That, who is the guru? They say that they want a living guru because they Why? want a living guru because. Who will, who will, uh, I mean, straighten their asses, right? Forward. <laughs> in Bhakti. What? Who will straighten their asses? If there, if there is no living guru, they, they will go wrong, right? So this and the is guru their... is having sex with someone? <laughs> <laughs> what can we say, bro? I, I face these questions. I'm so just the asking living you. Guru I face these has, questions from them. What is the living guru? He's just a, he's just a clergyman. Yeah. He's not a guru because he cannot take you to Krishna. He's not a liberated soul, like Prabhupada says here. Yeah. So why do you need a living guru? Do so they need a living guru because they want to see him physically. Physically, they want to take that uh, teachings for him, right? They want some, <laughs> okay. someone physically. Yeah. That's a, that creates a problem, <laughs> doesn't they it? They have their own reason. The living guru them. doesn't know what to teach. Right. That's what I'm saying. Mahi, may I say something? No. Yes. yes. Okay. Course, supposing, course, course, course. supposing that you go into a temple without the GVC, without the gurus. Yes. Oh, but everything, okay. everything else is there in the temple. Deities are there, worship beautifully. Cooks are in the kitchen making prasadam. Uh, reading yeah. from Prabhupada's unchanged books in the temple room. Lectures are going on. Kirtan. Now, what would be... The way to run a temple with Prabhupada as the Acharya? When people go into the temple, say, I'd like to join, say, great, here's some headphones. Sit down and listen to Prabhupada chanting. And exactly. And you'll learn exactly how Prabhupada chanted Kirtan. And then everybody in the temple is on that. Nobody can be in the temple if they haven't listened to Prabhupada chanting Kirtan. Of course, of a Stranger comes in during Kirtan, everyone will be chanting just like Prabhupada. So he will also, but if he wants to chant nicely or actually lead a Kirtan, he has to sit with the headphones too to learn to play Murdanga like Prabhupada, Kartals like Prabhupada, and chant like Prabhupada. And why? You want the spiritual message? Well, the spiritual message comes from Krishna Loka, not from an initiating guru. The initiating guru has no connection with Krishna Loka. What can he so do? They say this that they say this that you run from being spiritual, you run from being being uh, 
chastised by your living guru that's why you guys now follow prabhupad right you don't oh, want to have... be chastised they we say can, this. We can, we, they, we their can... questions are asking you we yeah. can beat people up if hmm. they want to be beaten up i mean that's <laughs> 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 Anyway, <laughs> well, you see, but can you see the living guru cannot give people Krishna? Exactly. He does. Uh, Prabhu, I am asking you the questions which I face whenever go I am go going ahead. there. So, oh, no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Do your do your best. Questions which I face from them. Yeah, yeah. I've I've uh, asked all the questions which they say to me. Right, that you you guys they say to me. Right. that you are following a wrong thing because you have to have a living guru as your guru who who will chastise you who will tell you what is right what is wrong right well, every the yeah. senior devotees will chastise you exactly yeah yeah prabhu I mean, has given the whole man home in, suppose you walk in the door from the street and you want to take off your karmic clothes and put on saffron yeah and you don't know what to do you either ask or will be told by the senior devotees how to behave why do you need a guru besides the gurus if you have somebody like um uh what's the guy over in in um, <coughs> south carolina uh ramachandra it's bir krishna swami bir krishna suppose you have initiated by bir krishna and you live in okay. california How is he going Water. to chastise you? How is he going to tell tell you anything? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> All you can do is listen to his tape, which is exactly what you can do with Prabhupada. Yes. Except with Prabhupada, you're getting pure spiritual life. Right. With Bhagwan Krishna, you're getting his best attempt at trying to do a job. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, whenever these people are just doing a job, basically, like I have a security job, they have a so-called appointed guru job. So the point the conclusion comes to down that propad is the spiritual master for the next 10000 years you should read his books only senior leaders can guide you they are not your gurus at all right this is what we want to teach it to out to outside people right bro hari bol am audible hari krishna what up Ramachandra Prabhu, you can hear me. Hari Bol. I can hear you. Yes, Prabhu. Hari Bol. I can hear you. What happened, yeah. Prabhu? No, 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 Prabhu froze. Then I'm Prabhu has gone on hold. I don't know what's going on, yeah, but you. Is frozen, oh, yeah. So you said that we should tell. What did you say? You, you said we should tell everyone that Prabhupada is the guru, and everyone should read Prabhupada's original books. And what else did you say? Exactly. Yeah, then I yeah. said that there are senior devotees, those who can guide you. Not, yeah, they are not your guru, but they can guide you, right? This yes, is the ultimate conclusion from this uh, topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's very simple. Anyone who reads Prabhupada's book systematically, they get perfect guidance from Prabhupada's books. So right. there's no need for any yeah. outside guidance because Prabhupada tells you what you need to do. In every practical letter, Shri Prabhupada is saying you should chant sixteen rounds, follow the regular principles, read my books, and render service. You know, so we we yeah, bro. So or, yeah. So what is so hard about that? All of Prabhupada's instructions are based on these principles. You know, chanting, service to I mean, from devotees. I mean, self-realized soul. If you hear, yeah, bro. If you hear from a self-realized soul, there, there was uh, he will always say you that from Prabhupad books I got changed, not from gurus. That's for sure. Uh, I can realize that I have read Prabhupad books. I hear his lectures. His lectures, I mean, purity is a force. If we have someone of his level of purity, you can follow him. But that's not possible in this twenty-first century or in this Maya world. Nothing is possible because Prabhupad was a pure devotee, right? That's for sure. Yeah, that's what we were discussing in this quote here, that a spiritual master must be liberated, and Prabhupada gave the perfect example of what a liberated soul spiritual master does. He writes books, he you know he gives guidance, personal guidance. So why are we saying that we're reading this right now? Prabhupada is saying a spiritual master must be liberated. So from this we can understand 
that Prabhupada is giving instruction, right? Isn't Prabhupada yeah, giving yeah. an instruction I, here? You know what actually he's doing is he became guru. Everybody began to speak in 1970. They refused yeah. to accept Prabhupada as the direction of manager for GBC because they saw eventually one of them or more of them or several of them would become successor gurus. Even uh, back then, they were right. ambitiously. That yeah. is the sinister, great sinister movement within our society yeah. was that people were plotting how to become gurus back then. <laughs> yeah. So they go along being faithful disciples with the idea, how do I become successor? Prabhupada never talked about a successor. He was waiting for us which we didn't get to, he was waiting for us to say, Prabhupada, no one can be your successor. Will you be guiding us personally for the next 10,000 years? Nobody asked him that question, did they? Exactly. Nobody wanted to ask him that question. They're asking, oh, well, what does it take to become a pure devotee? How do you do? How many disciples can you make? They were interested like that, but nobody said, Srila Prabhupada, Will you be the spiritual master of this gun for the next 10,000 years? Or will the GBC be the manage, the supreme ecclesiastical authority? Are you going to be the spiritual master for the next 10,000 years? I really would like to have heard him ask that question, and I would really have loved to hear his answer. But I mean, if what I other choice is there? Do we have another choice? You talk about this guru, that guru. That's simply a waste of time. It's distraction. Distraction, yes. To, okay. Uh, Mahi Prabhu, talk about, okay, yes. now you have a spiritual master named so-and-so guru. In Let's program. take Dear Krishna. What are you going to do? <laughs> what will that be like in 500 years? He'll be finished. No one will talk about him. He won't be even remembered. No. Well, you not only won't be remembered, but how will you have a guru 500 years from now if there have been thousands and thousands of gurus cropping up all over the place, establishing themselves as bona fide acharyas of ISKCON all over the world for 500 years? How are you going to have a real Krishna consciousness if you don't have Prabhupada as the guru? It will be a disaster. You're just... Well, obviously, the disaster we can understand, but the solution... If the solution is Prabhupada in the center. Yeah, if Prabhupada, well, besides in the center, as the living guru. Yes, Prabhupada in the center as the living guru. Yeah, and if people oh, listen, right to now. His, listen to his tapes and chant only what they hear, his, he will live through them. If you want to fear devotee to inhabit you, to give you upliftment into the spiritual world, listen to his tapes and then chant accordingly. But everybody wanted to do their own thing. Why? Because everybody wanted to be their own guru. But it hasn't worked out very well, has it? And that's only 52 years. So how do we make it work for 500 years? Ramachandra, don't you think? Prabhupada as the living guru in the center of his country? Right now. Not in the future. Right now and forever. Right now? Forever. Yeah, well... Yeah, well, he is. Uh, yeah. He is, yeah. But let's I just guess say the 500 last years from day, now, yeah. would you say Prabhupada will be the living guru in the center? Definitely. Yes, Definitely. living guru in the center. Then, Always then present in the future, right now. Yeah, yeah. But if there's all these other gurus, what are they going to do? Make more gurus and more gurus? And I'll more burn gurus? them down, just like I burn the weeds down. What will happen in 500 years for all these gurus in this con right now well there'll be millions by then so everyone will be you know falling left and right and what will, what what will they be able to do nothing at all do? create a chaos which is the movement right now i mean more or less <laughs> more or less yeah i mean we can see just 52 years passing now they have 100 100 <coughs> so-called gurus so now many people like uh, Bhakti Charu, the late Bhakti Charu, Tamal Krishna, Hansa Duda, all these people are dying. So they're getting ready to plant more seeds of this false, you know, this uh, imposter, not liberated soul gurus. 
So if okay, you go so 500 years from imposters now, as though that they have some effect on us. They, they don't they have any effect upon us. No. So why do we talk about take them seriously in our <laughs> conversation? Oh, the gurus, the gurus, the gurus. We talk about them as though the gurus were taking that topic seriously. It's not a serious topic. It is, they are irrelevant to the future. If we want to take something serious topic, Prabhupada, Prabhupada, Prabhupada is what we can do. And what about Prabhupada? What, are, what a guru do you going to have? Prabhupada. Who's going to be at the center of this God? Prabhupada. How are we going to know how to chant? Mm -hmm. Listen to his tapes. And exactly. chant only the way he yeah, chants. You see, that's what we should have done all along. But the movement he fell apart the, practically he, before it got yeah. started. But Prabhupada kept everything going because look what he did. He brought this movement all over the all over the globe. He brought it to India, opened so many temples. And he used exactly. criminals, he used conspirators, poisoners protect, that ended up poisoning him. They used these people to accomplish what he did because they were willing to do so while they were waiting to become the successor Acharya. And when it came to a point that they couldn't handle it anymore, they poisoned him in order to become the successor of China. And they didn't poison him because they felt qualified. They poisoned him because they were afraid that if things went further, that somebody else would be the successor of China. So they figured we better poison him now while we have a chance. And the, the, the proof that he was poisoned or murdered or whatever you want to say, stabbed to death, if you will, is that he didn't finish the Srimad Bhagavatam. So he said he would, and he didn't. But Prabhu, I guess Prabhupada at the last, in his last years, right, he knew everything what was happening. But he knew, I mean, he was... from the, he knew everything from the very minute they became GBC. Exactly. exactly. He knew everything. But he was, he, they were, the, the criminal GBC was thinking he doesn't know. But exactly, he didn't, he didn't know. You can you can see through his lectures. Whenever you uh, see his last lectures, in his speeches, in his last words, he was saying indirectly that these offenders are like doing wrong, right? But but yeah, because he founded the movement, he yeah. was not bluntly saying it, but indirectly but he was saying it. Yeah, he left and those he, clues. He, knew it. he left those speeches for us. Exactly. It, but if we yeah, ever saw yeah, yeah. the incredible betrayal of Srila Prabhupada starting even before <laughs> 1970, but if we saw the incredible betrayal of Prabhupada, we would spend 10 years weeping. Exactly. Yeah, I would, because I was going through it. Yeah. I didn't stop it. I didn't kill anybody. I didn't, <laughs> well, how, I didn't prevent it. I didn't even understand it. Well, I you didn't even understand Prabhupada it. Prabhupada knows well. what he's doing. I saw right. so many things that I thought were wrong, but I Prabhupada's there, he must know what he's doing. But now, you should have, have done something. You, you, you're looking at it with hindsight. You should have done something. In hindsight, if I had that, if I, in hindsight, I go back to ignorance. Yeah. What did you say? But in, with hindsight, I go back to ignorance. Oh, what I do you mean? No. Oh, you didn't know, right, right. Back then. No, right? or at least what I knew didn't fit with what I thought I should be doing. Ah, uh, wow. I mean, strictly speaking, according to the next year of, next year of devotion, yeah. if you hear the pure devotee blasphemes, you have a number of choices. One is to commit suicide. One is to leave the place. One is to kill the person who's blaspheming. And I heard Prabhupada say that Prabhupada was, I heard Shama, Shamasundar and, and Kamal Krishna say that Prabhupada is, you know, I should have killed them. Got a knife from the kitchen, come in and kill them. That's what I should have done. But I didn't. And as a result, Prabhupada was poisoned. The reason Kamal said that Prabhupada was senile was because 
he couldn't understand why Prabhupada didn't see him, Tamal, as his true successor. And Tamal even wrote a play later on about the emperor and his most confidential advisor, which he saw himself as being. And that the emperor exiled his advisor, just like Prabhupada exiled Prabhupada to China. So then the advisor, the, the emperor realized he'd made a mistake, called the advisor back, and they had a very happy reunion. And that was turned into a play that was done in New York by the ISKCON players. Can you imagine? <clears throat> that was Tamal's fantasy. So he considered that Prabhupada was senile because Prabhupada didn't understand that Tamal was his most confidential associate. And Prabhupada sent him, exiled him to China, which Tamal saw as completely against the reality of Krishna's desire. But the reason I didn't kill Tamal is that he was the person, Bhartna Padaksha Guru, he's the person that brought me and convinced me to surrender to Prabhupada in 1968. So because, if he had not been part of the production guru, I could have killed him. But he was my part of production guru. I couldn't kill him. So that's what happened. And I have to go to the court of Yamaraj and pay the price of having not saved Prabhupada from that conspiracy. I'm not saying the conspiracy wouldn't have continued because the Ryan Maharaj would have gotten somebody else to talk to. Although that conversation probably took place before Tamal and Narayan Maharaj were consulting each other. So anyhow, you see, the burden that I'm carrying is huge. All right, so back to our quote here. Rupa Manjari Prabhu, you haven't said anything, so we'd like to hear from you. Where are you? You're still on vacation, looks like. <laughs> <laughs> So now we'd like to hear from you. Um, don't have anything to say right now. Okay. <laughs> Make something up like the gurus do. Why don't I say something from the quote that you sent, Rupa? Yeah. Read something from the quote. Well, um, I like that he says that in the broader sense, everyone comes from Krishna Loka because... Um, there have been debates back and forth about the origin of the soul. And the Gaudiya Math says that, uh, that we come from the Tatastha Shakti, which is the um, dividing point between, um, oh gosh, my brain is fuzzy. Tatastha Shakti is, uh, you know, like the line in the sand where... It can go this way or that way, basically. Spiritual world or material world, well, right? But, yeah, between the Brahman and material energy, right? Yeah. And Prabhupada is saying that that's not the case here. Jai. Well, the spiritual, what are they saying? They're saying the spiritual originates in the material world or it's, it's, it's created in the material world or... It's a creator's it, it, material? It, it, or what are they Prabhupada, saying? Prabhupada referred to it as marginal energy. <coughs> yes. Is, tatastha, you can look up Tatastha, actually, if you want to. Why not look up Tatastha yourself? Right I'm now? looking it up. Hold on. Hare Bol. Hare hey! We have got the roaring monster himself. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Mahaprabhu ki jai. Jai, 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 You had okay. the opportunity. You had the opportunity, uh, Nara Narayan, to save Prabhupada. 
I don't know if it would have saved Prabhupada. Okay, here we go. We're going to bring some contacts in here. This is a letter to Ray Rama in 1968, December 2nd, 1968. I guess Ray Rama Prabhu asked the question, and Srila Prabhupada answers to Ray Rama. The answer to your question about the marginal energy is that the jiva, soul, is always called marginal, marginal energy, whether he is in the spiritual world or in the material world. There are instances where the marginal energy jiva's souls have fallen from the spiritual world, just like Jai and Vijay. So the potency to fall under the influence of the lower energy is always there. And thus the individual jiva soul is called Krishna's mar marginal energy. Marginal energy. Uh, how about that, Rupa, to your, <laughs> to your quote? That yeah. Prabhupada said, huh? Prabhupada is saying a totally different thing here. See it? Explain the difference. Rupa Manjari Prabhu was saying that uh, in 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 some of the Gaudiya, uh, what what would you call it? Um, Gaudiya cults or groups. Mart. Gaudiya Mart. Yeah, Gaudiya Mart. The spirit soul originates or falls down from the spiritual world, right? Here Prabhupada is saying uh, there are instances where marginal energy, jiva souls have fallen from the spiritual world, just like Jaya and Vijaya. So the potency to fall under the influence of the lower energy is always there. And thus the individual soul is called Krishna's marginal energy. Yeah, the soul is, but uh, did you look up Tatasta? Uh, let me look up Tatasta one second. How do you spell it? T-A-T-A-S-T-H-A. -T -A -T -A. Okay. T-A-T-A-S-T-H-A. -T -A. Okay. There we go. I found some Tatasta uh, keywords. Um, here we go. So this is from the edited version of the books because this archives I'm using here. I'm not looking it up on uh, prabhupadbooks.com. They don't have this feature of looking up words like this Bhaktivedanta database. Go ahead. Yeah, Srila Prabhupada says, uh, Rupa, do you want to read the paragraph? Please. Sure. Yeah, Rupa, read it. That's good. Here we go. Okay. You can start here. The constant companions of Lord Krishna, such as Uddhava, are all liberated souls, and they descended along with Lord Krishna to this material world to fulfill the mission of the Lord. The Pandavas are also liberated souls who descended along with Krishna, with Lord Krishna, to serve him in his transcendental pastimes on this earth. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord and his eternal associates who are also liberated souls like the Lord, come down to this earth at certain intervals. The Lord remembers all these descents, but his associates, although liberated souls, forget due to their being tatas the shakti, or the marginal potency of the Lord. That is the difference between the Vishnu tattvas and the Jiva tattvas. The Jiva tattvas are infinitesimal parts, particles of the Lord's potency, and therefore they require the protection of the Lord at all times. And to the eternal servitors of the Lord, the Lord is pleased to give all protection at all times. The liberated souls never therefore think themselves as free as the Lord or as powerful as the Lord, but they always seek the protection of the Lord in all circumstances, both in the material world and in the spiritual world. This dependence of the liberated souls is constitutional, for the liberated souls are like sparks of a fire that are able to exhibit the glow of fire along with the fire and not independently. Independently, the glow of the sparks is extinguished, although the quality of fire or the glowing is there. Thus, those who give up the protection of the Lord and become so-called lords 
themselves out of spiritual ignorance come back again to this material world even after prolonged apasya of the severest type. That is the verdict of all Vedic literature. Jai. So there we go. Tatashta Shakti. Jai. Haribo. Jai, Jai. Prabhupada used the word. Huh. Yes, no, no, no. Go ahead. Well, do we have concluded whether the jiva comes from the Tathasta Shakti or from Krishna Loka? This particular reading didn't really deal with that. Okay, let's see. Nope. Can we can we search anything else like the Okay, here Prabhupada the, say, the origin of the fallen soul. According to the Vishnu Purana, Bhagavad Gita, and all Vedic literatures, the living entities are generated from the Tatashta energy of the Lord, and thus are always are always the energy of the Lord and are not the energetic. So Prabhupada is saying the living entities are generated from the Tatashta energy of the Lord. Here we go. Yeah, but, here, but we're stuck now with trying to understand where the jivas in Krishna Loka came. Would they come from Tathasta or are they always in Krishna Loka? We all come from the Lord. We yeah. are in the Krishna and Loka and we were thrown out. Because we were like source. we the all come from the Lord. Source. Yeah, Hare Krishna. Hare yeah, that is a good question. That needs more research and uh, into Prabhupada's books. What does Prabhupada say regarding uh, how the... Are we trying to see... Well, <laughs> what are we trying to achieve here? We're we trying to find out if the souls are falling down from the spiritual world or are they created from the Tatashta and then get sent to the material world or what, what are we trying to understand here or... Well, I, I think one thing we could ask right now is if the presidents of Krishna Loka originated with the Tasta Loka. Did the, uh, res, do the residents of Krishna Loka, did the residents of Krishna Loka originate from Tatasta? Mm -hmm. What's the Tatasta? Marginal okay. energy. It's the energy Marginal. that exists between the material and the spiritual energy. Marginal energy. Matasta. Tatasta. <coughs> yeah. I will, I mean, the point which hit me 15 minutes back and I can't again forget it that Nanarayan Prabhu just said that I would have killed Tamal Krishna Maharaj if he would have not brought him to Krishna consciousness. So this is like a very hard hitting thing on my heart, and uh, I would forever yes. not forget this. Though that you could you have can saved Prabhupada, the but, burden that I'm experiencing. But just because he brought you into Krishna consciousness, you didn't kill him. That is also a valid point, Prabhu. But yeah, it's like it's like a river in between, and how do we choose? It's very tough to choose. Yeah, yeah, Prabhu. Yeah, well, you can't do it. I mean. If somebody else had brought me into Krishna consciousness, that would have been fine. I would have killed him. Yes, I would. Yeah. But, you know, it's sort of like he gave me Krishna. Exactly. Yeah, bro. That's what the Vardhana Pradorsha Guru does, is he's the agent that gives you Krishna and Prabhupada. But he can when he was me. doing... Yeah, bro, when he was doing such things, right, on the back of Prabhupada, were you there and were you were you telling him that, dude, as a friend, as a god brother, you're doing you're doing something wrong and we should not do this. To whom? What? You had conversations with him. Yeah. But what the, what was he doing wrong? Was he moody? I get more mood disease. Sorry. Sorry, Mahaprabhu. What what was Tamal doing wrong? Everything he did was an echo of what Prabhupada wanted. 
this GBC building up, right, bro? The, all this <laughs> GBC and then GBC given a given all the instructions, right? Never wanted Prabhupada never wanted such things, right? He wanted every temple to be separate, right? Yeah, that's a uh, question, yeah. Mohit Prabhu. The direction of management is the document that created the GBC. I did not see a copy of that till 1992. Achha. Now, I had seen it actually a few weeks after they created it, and I was searching it for it everywhere, how I could see a copy. Achha. But they hid it. The, G the temple presidents hid it. And Achha. they didn't want anyone to see it. Uh, Harry Velas in Seattle told me he didn't see it until 1979 or something like that. And he used the temple, he was a guru, he's now a guru, but he was a temple president, he was the GBC, all of these things. And he never saw the direction of management until 1979. They hid it that carefully. Achha. Got it, bro. And once I found it, I, was, I went mad. And I started broadcasting it everywhere from 1992 onward. I got my first crude Apple computer back then. In yeah, you can practically crank it to make it work, <laughs> but it was so so few. I mean, I think it had like twenty five thousand megabytes on it or something, you know. But I just kept on going and going and going, and we ended up in, in the two thousands. Rupa Manjoy and I made a whole site for the direction of management. Achha. Got it. Yeah. So what is the, what, what I page? mean, the basic. Yeah. Yeah, Rupa. Rupa, are you still there? Ahead, bro. Yes, I'm here. Great. Okay, we got some questions from devotees online. So let's read yeah. those, those questions here. Let me see here. Where is it? Uh, one question from the devotee is, yeah, how will we ask personal questions with Srila Prabhupada and how will Prabhupada direct you as your guru? Edwin Prabhu was asking, yeah, how will we ask personal questions with Prabhupada and how will Prabhupada direct us as your guru? Well, this raises an interesting question. Why do you want to ask a personal question from your guru? Prabhupada answered questions that were personal because people asked him personal questions, <clears throat> but that wasn't the duty of the guru. The duty of the guru is to give you the means of deliverance. And how do I, I yeah. don't think you could have gone to Bhakti Siddhanta, Prabhupada's guru, Bhakti Siddhanta, and asked him personal questions. <laughs> you would have been very offended if you did. Yeah, personal question means relative thinking according to my body and how I think and how I'm feeling yeah. and what I want to do. Who should I marry? You know, how much, what kind of job should I get? <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> these the these are personal questions. Perfect, perfect understanding, <laughs> yes. You know, it's sort of like everybody wants a little token that they could take and keep with them. Yeah. Like a, in their, a little, you take a little Prabhupada's words and put them in a little bag and wear them around their neck. But it's not the purpose of Krishna consciousness to, to answer personal questions. Yeah, a lot of people so, are conditioned souls. You know, all they have is this body and how they can make their life very comfortable. So they have all these personal questions. So there is well, that. But, yeah, but during the time of Prabhupada, they didn't dare ask too many questions like that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but they did ask personal questions. <laughs> But uh, to answer the person <laughs> online, <laughs> to, to answer the person online, uh, we have to take into account that right now the ISKCON gurus can answer all sorts of personal questions, but they can't take you back to Godhead. You know, so that's, what do you need? Really God? I mean, anyone can answer a personal question. You can go to a priest in a in a church. You can go to a minister in a in a <clears throat> church. To, they Protestant church. I can answer their you, personal you say, question. I have no some problem. question of, about my husband. 
I have some question about my child. Yeah. You can you can do that as a counselor. Right. You can go to a psychological counselor, you could go to group <laughs> therapy, you can go to personal <laughs> therapy. There's or a whole bunch of ways of getting answers to problems. Or you questions. can go to court. Or you can go to court. <laughs> and the judge will make the decision. <laughs> Yeah, let's not get too extreme, but, but to answer the question to the person is that you don't need to ask personal questions from the spiritual master. Now, having said that, there will be, supposing you say, I'm going to go to my ISKCON guru to ask the question, instead of asking, and I don't know if I can ask Prabhupada, because he's not going to answer my question, and say, I need that, I want my personal question. Why not go to the same person that would have been your guru, who's a senior member of your temple? If he could give a personal instruction as a guru, can he give personal instruction without being a guru? He's a senior devotee. Can he not give you good advice? Why does um, he have to have the designation of guru, which doesn't have any spiritual value, considering yeah. he's not a pure devotee? Yeah. So you could say personal instruction can come from your elder or senior god brother. Yeah. And if he knows, he knows. He doesn't, he doesn't. But then again, the guru appointed by the GBC is also nothing more than a senior god brother. So what makes him more wise or knowledgeable or resourceful? I'm more wise than. Yeah, what, said, what gives him more power to give, answer your question than if he was simply in the temple as your senior godmother? I'm more wise than 99.9% .9 of them. Yeah. Well, do you get the distinction, Ramachandra? Yeah. Yeah. So the, so the distinction again, is yeah. the same person is the same person instead of being a guru is in the temple, temple president or senior god brother in the temple. <clears throat> you talk to him and he answers your personal question. If he's a guru, what makes that que personal question better answered? What makes the que quality of the answer better if he's a guru rather than a god brother? So again, the conclusion of our topic from the meeting is like Pro again, that Prabhupada is the spiritual master for the next 10,000 years. You can go to a senior devotee in the temple, ask him questions, right? But he is not your guru. He should not exactly. be acting as a guru. That's the point. And, so, and if you yeah. want the answer to the big questions, put on the headsets and listen to Prabhupada's lectures. Yeah. That's the living guru right through all... the headset. Yeah. And that's the you big, listen yeah. to him chanting Hare Krishna and you develop his exact way of chanting. You That's hear him playing said. Redungo. Develop his exact way of playing Redungo. If you do Anyone? that, the question, when you come out into the street on Sankirtan with 50 men, it will electrify the population. Those we, people <laughs> that are doing Sankirtan now, where they bang on drums and wiggle their butts at the crowd, <laughs> they do. They get in a circle and wiggle their butts at the crowd. Okay, uh, we got more questions from. Uh, okay, I guess from more last, one last one last thing, bro. On sure. This. Yeah. Uh, I mean, from a personal realization, if you're chanting, if you're doing quality chanting, right? If you're hearing every single word of your chant, uh, I mean, Prabhupada will automatically guide you towards the real thing. He will tell you everything if you're well, chanting but, properly. Yes. That's the real, real. That's that's what I have felt, right? So. If Particularly if you're question. listening to a recording of Prabhupada chanting. Yeah, exactly. If you listen, and if you chew your japa, listen to Prabhupada doing japa, what could be better? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And you if you have any questions, you, but... yeah, bro. If you have any questions, you can just, I mean, search on online on the video on, on from Prabhupada. I mean, Prabhupada will guide you. Prabhupada will send you that video. That's what I have felt. So yeah. rather than going towards a guru. That's, yeah. that's so instead not meant of that's looking not around work. for a guru that isn't <laughs> yeah. too bad, why not listen yeah. to Prabhupada <laughs> exactly. through good, good quality yeah. Hear headphones? Yeah, and we got some more questions now. Are we no, ready? Yeah, let's, let's have them. Okay, so then Edwin, Edwin asked another question here. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. What does he say here? Uh, the next question, why did 
Prabhupada give initiation and become Diksha Guru when Srila Saraswati Goswami was a pure devotee to an Acharya. Why didn't Srila Prabhupada declare Saraswati Goswami Maharaj as Acharya? Well, he does declare Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur as Acharya. So I'm not sure why you're saying that, but if you read yeah, Prabhupada's... We, we have already made, you, Ramachandra, you've already made that distinction and in that essay that uh, you read earlier, yeah. uh, that the pure devotee, if he's coming from Krishna Loka, then he's qualified to be the Acharya. Yeah. He doesn't have to refer to the previous Acharya who is coming from Krishna Loka. Yeah. It's the real problem comes up when you have gurus or quote-unquote Acharyas who haven't come from Krishna Loka and are trying desperately to represent the GBC as liberated priests of some sort. Yeah. So are desperately trying to be Prabhupada, next Prabhupada, which is impossible, right? You can't be yeah. Prabhupada. Prabhupada was a pure devotee. He's come from Krishna right. Loka. You can hear his lectures. You can hear his right. reading. It's specifically written there that he was not writing. Krishna came in his mind and Krishna was writing those scriptures. Prabhupada has said this. He said he has said this also. You can read my scriptures again and again because I have not written that those. I have not written those. Krishna has given me the guidance. Krishna has written through me. Yeah. That's the real point. Yeah. Yeah, Haribo. Yeah. Excellent. Haribo. Jai, yeah. Jai Prabhu. That is really fantastic realization. Okay. Haribo. We have more. People want personal guidance. So <laughs> remember, we're talking about personal guidance. So someone asked a personal question, which. Uh, uh, his, his name is Brick Blocks. Hare Krishna, I have a question. Should I work to be stable and financially support the temple and have a high scholarship or should I join an ashram and be dependent? Let me ask the question again. <laughs> Hare Krishna, I have a question. Should I work, be stable and be financially... What do you say? I have a question. Should I work to be stable and be able to financially support the temple and have a high scholarship or should I join an ashram and be dependent? Well, Ramachandra, how would you answer that? Well, I'm not sure what he exactly wants in, in life, you know. Well, no, no, you can see what he's saying. He said, should yeah. I work outside, get my PhD, and then use the money to support the temple, or should I renounce that and go into the temple and become a temple devotee? Exactly. So, if he, yeah. so if he gets a PhD and then <clears throat> becomes a meat eater, would it be helpful? It becomes a what? Meat eater. No, no, he's not talking about eating meat. Oh, he's yeah, talking exactly. about living only to... He's talking about getting the PhD only to support the temple. Service. Okay. He's talking about pure service by giving money, pure service by being in pure the ashram. Term. So he's asking pure. two questions, Prabhu. He has two ways of living. First, Ramachandra, he's asking that, should I work outside and pay my hardened money, give donations to the temple so that it, it is counting as a devotional service or I should join as an ashram? I I should join as a brahmachari in an ashram. He's asking this question. Yeah. Yes. And I think yeah. this, in, in the context of uh, the bigger picture we're dealing with, considering <laughs> yes. that this kind is inhabited by bogus gurus and that by the GBC, I would say to him, stay outside, earn the money, support the temple, but be prepared to move in later if you want. Once we have cleared the GBC out of this con, and you can have Prabhupada as your guru. Jai. Haribo, Jai, Jai, Jai. I wanted this answer only. Hare Haribo, Krishna. Say this. Hari, 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 Haribo, Jai. Na, na, Bro, you, Jai. I wanted oh. this only. Yeah, bro. Yeah. You think that's a good, a good response? Yeah, that's a perfect, perfect response. Exactly. You should remain independent. Exactly. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah, Haribo. Go ahead, okay. bro. Now we have some more questions. Uh, let's see. Oh, whatever. Calm. 
Is Ismale says, Guru should be able to dispel all doubts of the devotee. Asking Guru what are the means of transcending material existence is a personal question in itself. Say that again. He says, asking the Guru what are the means of transcending material existence is a personal question in itself. Well, that's the purpose of becoming a devotee. Yeah, to, to learn how to get free from the material, you know, yeah. encumberment. So, so if you listen to Prabhupada's ta tapes, yeah. Yeah, that's all he just describes. You yeah. chant Hare Krishna in order to be reunited with Krishna, so you can go past the Tathasa level and regain your place in Krishna Loka. Excellent. Right. Hari, 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 well, excellent, yeah. But, but we don't need an intermediary guru to tell us that. <laughs> Prabhupada is telling us that directly. Yeah, the Prabhupada has hey, so yeah, many lectures, yeah. conversations, letters, you can get everything you want, and, and, any and answer tape. you want. How many exactly. lectures you've given on tape? He will tell you everything on the tape. Yeah. If you listen to the tape, you're listening to someone speaking from Krishna Loka. You, just to stand back for a moment. Can you see the enor enormousness, enormity of the crime that has been committed that the GBC and Temple Presidents could have been inducing everybody to listen to Prabhupada's yeah. tapes all those years, even when Prabhupada was here, to emulate Prabhupada's kirtan and chanting, Jai. not to make up their own, but to listen to Prabhupada's tapes and chant accordingly all along, and then the GBC tried to create a complete separation Complete. Between Iskand yeah. devotees and Prabhupada. Yeah. And then they put in gurus to distract them from Prabhupada. Yeah, that's what's happening here in Sacramento. You know, you know, these wonderful devotees, they've been distracted by the various gurus, and now they're just going at each other's throats without any. <laughs> yeah, because like, and what can they do? They are loyal to their guru. Yeah, yeah, it's very it's unfortunate. Like it's, Even the kids are like getting entangled in this. Gurus are like mafia capos yeah. or, 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 or the head of the street gangs. Yeah. Yeah. And my gang. That's your gang. <laughs> now, let's, now let's fight. <laughs> yeah, so that's what's going on here. Exactly. Whenever, whenever I had questions about management, this, that, I went to Prabhupada's lectures, conversations, letters. Exactly. I found all my answers, you know. Exactly. Yeah. This is the process. So, this is the process. You can't change the process. This is the original process. And uh, so now we, we need to yeah. Yeah. flood ISKCON with Prabhupada's kirtans. Jai. Flood them. Yeah. In other words, if you go to any ISKCON temple, that's what you should hear coming over the sound system is Prabhupada's kirtans. Jai. Not simply anecdotal because they're fun to listen to, so that mm. you will learn how to chant properly yourself. Yeah. So that everybody who chants Hare Krishna should learn to chant like Prabhupada. And why not? That sound That's vibration is available. Why do you prefer a lesser sound vibration? In fact, sometimes a truly gruesomely horrible sound vibration. Why do you they prefer want to be that over the sound of the pure devotee of the Lord? Why is it practically forbidden to chant like Prabhupada in this country? Because they want to be cheated, Prabhu. What can we say for them now? They want to be well, cheated. They, I don't know if they want, they don't want to be cheated. They want to cheat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nobody wants to be cheated, but everybody would like to cheat. They get a piece yeah. of the stolen property. Somebody steals a cake, I want a piece of that. You know, so yeah. I want a piece of that stolen cake. They And they created a whole mythology around it. So, uh, you know, that happened. That on Prabhupada's When, on Prabhupada's festival in Los Angeles, three days yeah. festival, mm. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, <clears throat> on that particular day, they never chant a Prabhupada Kirtan once. And I was asked by somebody that doesn't want to chant Prabhupada Kirtans, but knows that I believe in it. He's a nice boy. Uh. There was 15 minutes, he gave me a chance. Would you like to chant? Because the professional Kirtanista that they paid to <laughs> leave the Kirtan is late. And we're just quiet. You can chant for about 15 minutes. 
So I sat down and started chanting and produced a very nice kirtan that was relishable and people were chanting very nicely. Then the professional showed up and they, ah, get out. Now the professional's here. Mm -hmm. That's and that was good. the only Prabhupada kirtan at the Prabhupada festival. They call it Prabhupada festival, but everything is not Prabhupada. Exactly. 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 <laughs> everything is just a... Uh, <laughs> it used to, at the beginning, there was a lot of... Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, bro. Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry no, 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 I interrupted, and I'm stopping you talk. I was just saying, bro, that's a professionally trained Kirtanese, professionals doing Kirtans, right? Rather than yeah. giving the original Kirtans which Prabhupada wanted, right? Yeah. Exactly, yeah. And, and they see nothing wrong with it. The reason why is these professional Kirtan leaders can get the whole congregation chanting together very powerfully. Doesn't matter the melody, they'll chant any melody they like. But it's like a rock and roll concert. If you get the exactly. rock and roll star up on the stage, then everybody in the audience will be swept away. And they're dancing like <clears throat> they're dancing like other disco people, right? Outside people, yeah. those who dance like disco. I mean, it was like so, so they're dancing like that, and that's people accept it. People are saying it's okay. It's 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 culture, right? Prabhupada yeah. always wanted this. They're preaching like this. So that's like... Uh, one time in the church. Okay. Hey, uh, I'd like to say something like that. Is that okay? Well, he, yeah, I, yeah. Bro. Uh, been, oh, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. In, in, go ahead. in probably 1969, I was in Los Angeles and Prabhupada was leading the kirtan. From exactly. the office. Yeah. Yes. Everybody, the devotees, the girls were in dress in saris and they were swirling. Their saris were swirling back and forth, just like the pictures in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Their saris were swirling back and forth. The men were dancing the Swami step, and we were chanting in such a way that we got lifted out of our bodies, and we started seeing it like from the astral plane, looking out, as so that there was no limit to how far up we could go from that chanting the Prabhupada did. And everybody, the the the, the Brahmacharinis, or, or, American girls, they looked like gopis. And the men, they looked like residents of Krishna Loka. And that kirtan went on, and it was ecstatic to, to the degree that it melted our hearts completely. And that was how a kirtan should be with Prabhupada's melody, Prabhupada chanting. Okay? Got it, Prabhu. Go ahead, Ramachandru. You have any questions online? Take. Okay, yeah, we got some. Yes, we got some discussions. Some nice discussion from some devotees here. Let's see here. Let me post it live. Uh, so you figure out how to handle it. Sure. Um, there was one question about Guru takes on the karma of his disciples. What do you mean? It is not his duty. I don't know what he's saying, but yes, the guru does take on the disciples' karma. Can, can, can you repeat that question? He says, guru takes on the karma of his disciples. What do you mean it is not his duty? Not his duty. Not, uh, not his duty? What do you say? Not his duty? Yeah, duty. No, bro, he's trying bro. to ask that, uh, how can you guys say this, that I have made a guru, he, he is eligible to take my karma. So how can you guys say that he's not taking my karma? He's a bogus guru. How can you explain that? So he's saying this, he's asking this question, yeah. Okay, so if you take initiation from a person who's not an Uttamadakari, that person, if you're not lucky, will take on your karma. Why is it not lucky? Because if he takes on your karma and takes on 100 disciples' karma or 500 disciples' karma, <clears throat> he becomes burdened with that karma. At the time of death, he will die to suffer the, out the karmic reactions of all the karma he's taken on because he can't transfer it upward to Krishna Loka. The whole idea of being a transparent by medium is that the karma goes through you up to Krishna Loka. It becomes evaporated by Krishna's mercy and grace. If you're a bogus guy, 
you're just taking it on yourself. You think it may be giving to Krishna, but it's not what's happening because you're not connected to Krishna yourself. Exactly. Okay. So what happens then is that at the time of death, the karma is there, it's stuck in that guy. Yeah. It's like he's, he's eating a bunch of unsavory things, unclean things, <laughs> like a bunch yeah. of insects or something, you know? And he's got all those insects in his gut. And then he dies. Yeah. And your insect is in his gut too, your karma. So he yeah. dies. Then you die. And so you go to his place. You don't go to Krishna Loka just because he took on your karma because he could not deliver your karma. You have to go to where he is. He did you a big favor. Just like the father takes on the karma of the wife and the children, right? In a, in a Vedic council. He take, the, the father, in exchange for the fact he has the pleasure of the wife, the pleasure of the cooking of the wife, the pleasure of the association of the children, all of that stuff, he takes on their karma. Assuming they does not take initiation. He takes on their karma. But the reward is that he gets that pleasure of his family. So this guy takes on the karma, just like taking on the karma of the wife or children, except he does it 500 or 1,000 times, or even 20 times, and then it's stuck. So you go, have to go to him to get to be there because it's your karma, not his. And you go there to his next, to where he is. Probably not his next birth, but somewhere in a unpleasant, hellish type situation. You have to go there because you, it's your karma. You, and you must be there with him because of, he took it and now you're there with him, with it. So that creates a bad problem for the devotee if he wants to go back to Godhead. Why mm -hmm. does he want to go to where the karma, the guru went, loaded with karma? <laughs> okay. The point here is, why don't you want to give your karma to a pure devotee? Give your karma to a pure devotee so that he can purify your soul and you can go back to Godhead. Why don't well, you that's what they, they think that's what they're doing. They yeah. think Iskand Guru is a pure devotee. <clears throat> that's the real issue. Tell him that these people are not pure devotees. They are exactly. practicing Krishna consciousness. They are not on that platform which Prabhupada is. Exactly. Therefore, yeah. Prabhupada, you know, can we see that Prabhupada is not dead? He's eternal, right? Yeah. Okay. Hi. Yes. An argument. An argument. Yeah. Prabhupada is the transparent by a medium of Krishna. Hi. So that means that Prabhupada, everything Prabhupada said was spoken by Krishna, and he even said so about his books, right? Yes. It all comes down. Mm. Okay. Now, the, if the spiritual master leaves his particular body, does that mean that the person inside that body is dead? Or is he still a pure devotee of Krishna? The pure devotee when he leaves his body, we're not talking about the body was the pure devotee. The person inside the body is the pure devotee, correct? Uh, hello? Correct. Okay, do you get that, Mohit, do you think? Why are we making a uh, distinction here? Srila Prabhupada and his body, we can understand that Prabhupada's body is also made out of earth, fire, you know, this thing. But his his body uh, and uh, his, body, his body is pure. Therefore, yes. he is put in samadhi, not burned. Yes, the, let's make that point clear. Was, yes, uh, there his exactly. body and my body is two different things. Yes, yes. Very well. excellent answer. Uh, my body goes it's been oh. burned up in a in a crematorium and ashes yeah. sprinkled in the ocean or something. But with with Prabhupada. Yeah, so his body is in samadhi, but that doesn't mean that Prabhupada is in samadhi. His body is as good as he is. Therefore, if you go there, you'll get all the spiritual benefit of his association from his body. Oh. Yeah, but yeah. let's talk about the part that isn't his body. Is, sir, is the associate of Krishna, if Krishna goes 
forward 500 years, will not Prabhupada, as a pure devotee, transparent by a medium, will he not go 500, 500 years forward with Krishna? In other words, is there any reason to believe that Prabhupada will not move throughout the 10,000 years alive within this country? Tough thing to think about. Yeah, bro. My body, your body. Yeah. So that you've been actually <laughs> saying that, Mohit, all along, is that the yeah. pure devotee, the a pure devotee, will he be alive in 500 years? Well, if Krishna is alive and he's still the, the transparent by medium of Krishna, then he will be alive. Exactly. Will he have a physical body in 500 years? Presumably not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it, will he be there? And we have all these Vyasa sons with Prabhupada murky on them. And we yeah. you say, well, that's just fiberglass. I, I'm talking about real living guru. Okay, okay. Now you go and see the deity in the temple made of marble. Are you going to say that's not Krishna? You want real living Krishna? That's, that's Krishna yeah. himself. Impossible, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. If you can have worship the marble deity as Krishna, and I swear, if you go into a temple like New Dorka in Los Angeles and see the deity, there's no question of the deity being marble. There is a big question that, that the deity is actually Krishna. It's the same with Eskon, Eskon Vindavan also. If you see the deities, it's, it's damn sure, I'm damn 200% sure that Krishna is there. Krishna is seeing you. So, exactly. Yeah. So why wouldn't that be true for Prabhupada as well? Exactly. You yeah, yeah. Prabhupada. Ah, bro. His soul, bro. He can see you. His soul is there, right? If he's not from the physical body, he's seeing you everywhere, wherever you go. Well, if you well, can, uh, Prabhupada, at least yeah. he's there in the Iskand double. If we get rid of the GBC, yeah. if we get rid so, of the yeah. GBC and the puppet gurus, get them out the door, then there's. Prabhupada and the Kirtan, mm -hmm. then you play Prabhupada's melodies on the recording. And the, the place is filled with Prabhupada yeah, chanting. Yeah. You come in and you want to chant, you chant with the yeah. recording. Or if the recording's not playing and you've studied the recording, you chant the way the recording sounds, not the way some guy in the streets of Bengal chants. <laughs> Haribo. <laughs> exactly. It's funny because if Sudananda said he was teaching the real Bengali Kirtans, the Prabhupada was just teaching elementary kirtan. Hare Krishna Hare. was just elementary. He was going to teach the real Bengali kirtans. But the Chidananda seemed to take him the mistaken view that Prabhupada was not from Bengal. He's a pure devotee from Calcutta. And he's supposed to not know, not be a pure devotee, not know how to chant Hare Krishna. That's a Chidananda, such demoniac influence. Practically destroyed the he practically single-handedly destroyed the entire movement. Because he taught everybody to chant differently than Prabhupada. And saying that it was better than Prabhupada, because Prabhupada didn't teach the real Bengali melodies. And then they went from there to all sorts of nonsense sounds. But anyhow, it's very painful for me to even discuss it. But if we talk about the Kirtans coming from Prabhupada's recording, we don't need to worry about any other sorts of kirtan for his God. Jai, Jai. Point to so if people come in, they want to sing a Hindu kirtan or whatever this. No, just chant what you hear. Prabhupada kirtan. If the Hindus want to join his God, can you imagine what will happen if that standard were there? Prabhupada is there and we see living guru in there in his just like the deities are living deities in this country. Yeah, and the Hindu, Hindu person comes in with the idea that, well, this is a nice temple. I think I'll join because then I'll be a Hindu in a Krishna temple. You know, he's thinking like that. Yeah. Don't think, many do think like that, I think. And then he, all he hears is Prabhupada. I'm going to chant a kirtan. And all he hears is Prabhupada kirtan. So if he chants like what he hears, the Prabhupada kirtan, he will become a Prabhupada devotee, not a Hindu. 
Haribo, Jai, Jai. He will transcend yes. the category of Hindu by chanting Prabhupada melodies and sound vibrations, to tonalities, mood, Haribo, Haribo. style. Haribo. In Jai, Sandy, Mahabhi. this kind of devotees go off to Bangladesh or something, and they all try to chant like the Hindus. <laughs> Haribo, okay. And what happened? They tore down that, 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 was a Durga, Durga, Durga Murti in front of the Krishna temple, went inside, burned the Vyasa sun, burned the Prabhupada Murti, and killed several people. Anyway. So why Krishna didn't protect? Because they were offending Prabhupada indirectly. Yeah. Prabhupada never wanted these duties inside, right? Prabhupada always wanted Radha Krishna to be there, right? They bring yeah. in other demigod deities and they are doing it wrong. Right, as their Acharya has told them. So, preach. Exactly. Yeah. Go ahead, preach, go ahead. preach, Bohit. Preach, Bohit. Preach. No, no, bro. Not, I'm not preach, keeping off that. Yeah, no, you're Anybody. speaking perfectly. Go for Impeccably. it. They, they, so, so, uh, yeah. Go ahead. So, Mahi, I was Mahi. saying this only that Prabhupada never wanted deities of other demigods to come. He always wanted uh, Radha and Krishna to be there. Yeah. So these guys have yeah. mumbled and jumbled or everything, and that's why these things happen, right? <coughs> yeah. And you know, particularly Durga, you know, she has a trident, right? Yeah. Three prongs, trident, the pitchfork that she has. And Prabhupada said when we were in Nairobi, she has that pitchfork. And what is the she he went through all of her ornaments. Because they wanted him to do a Durga Pooch, and he was not about to do it. He refused. And they said, yeah. well, we paid you to come here. And they said, then you will leave. You know, and no, I'm not going to do it. So <clears throat> I was there when he was arguing the point. He had a copy of the Isopanishad, was Vishnu on the cover, and he was the guy was arguing with him on how he should do a Durga Pooch. And Prabhupada was sat there in a beautiful Italian, greenish Italian of uh, Velour chair. Then he held up the Isopanishad like this. He pointed to it and he said, Do you accept? Do you not accept? And then the guy started talking again. Prophet said, Do you accept? Do you not accept? I, we all thought we'd be kicked out of there, you know? We were all prepared to pack our bags. But guess what? That same guy's house, we had dinner that night and everything was fine. Well, Prabhupada was yeah. on the Vasa sun in the in the in the Brahma Samaj with several thousand Hindus, and he was yeah. talking about Durga. And Durga had so many ornaments. He went through them. He said, "It chants this trident. Trident means three teeth, right? Dent means teeth, and tri means three. So three tooth means on a stick. You know, you know what I'm talking about? The three prongs she has. And he said, Durga has this trident." And with that dragon, she is stabbing demons. He said. And the audience is just absolutely electrified. They can hardly move. They are completely electrified because Prabhupada's speaking so strongly. Not nice and kind Swami guy, in, but powerfully. And he said, she has this trident. And she is stabbing demons. Then he cries out, and who are those demons? He cries out, <coughs> we are those demons. Exactly. Whoever right. is suffering from material pain is being stabbed by the trident of Durga. And he looked around exactly, the room. Yeah. He said, and they are worshipping. You're worshipping the person that's stabbing you. That's the material goddess. Anymore. <laughs> Krishna made it clear, don't do that. So Rathi yeah. was burned, but it's repairable. Prabhupada's mercy was burned, repairable. But the three devotees or two or three devotees that were killed there, not repairable. And why were they not protecting the temple? Why was the temple even open? They should have shut the temple and let the Durga Puja go on outside. But they actually put a Durga Murti on there because so many Hindus were coming to the Krishna temple. They said, 
We're coming to the Krishna temple, giving so many donations. Now we want to put a Durga diorama of the form of Durga on the outside. So what can we do that? What could he say? You give That's so much totally money, how can we say no? Way. Yeah, well, they, but they could have said yes, but then we'll close the temple because <clears throat> we don't want to confuse what's being worshipped. But no, the Durga people wanted Durga to be part of the, the mix. You can't mix things, Prabhu, when you're a pure devotee has said, when a pure devotee like Prabhupada has said, these things are fixed, you need to follow it, right? Then only you can get healthy, right? Why are they mixing things with other countries' things and then mumble and jumbling up it up? Why are they bringing it in ESCON, right? Don't bring it in ESCON. Do some well, other, make it, some other, go there, it, right? ESCON has nice temples. So if the Hindus come with Durga to the nice temple, they consider it's a nice thing to do. And besides, a lot of the members of the t congregation are Hindus. So why shouldn't the Hindus have their Hindu goddess in the temple? You see, that's the thinking. Mohi. So our job is to keep it pure. So Ramachandra, what was the question? Did we get off track on the answer? Um, I don't know. What was the question? <laughs> well, you, you, read, you read the question. <laughs> to, be, to be or not to be? Well, there's a lot of discussion going on. People are applying uh, various material understandings to Srila Prabhupada. One guy was saying, if Srila Prabhupada is a liberated soul and enjoying Goloka, how can he be guru at the same time engaged in worldly affairs of a devotee? Oh, this is another statement online? Yeah. Oh, how many, how many more are there? Well, there was some discussion going on, but uh, let's see one. A couple of points that they shared here. One was well, there. What we should do, even if we go over 10 o'clock, which seems inevitable, we must answer. Yes, all the okay, questions. let's answer then. If Prabhupada is a liberated soul and enjoying Goloka, how can he be guru at the same time engaged in worldly affairs of the devotee? Well, he's not engaged in worldly affairs. That's what I said. Prabhupada is not engaged in worldly affairs. I said, just like the soul is untouched or doesn't die. I said, you're applying material understanding to a pure devotee. That's why. Yeah. So we can discuss on that basis it, it, how people it, it are... It could be argued, how can Krishna be in Krishna Loka and then yes. come down and have pastimes in Vrindavan, India? Yeah. How can Lord Chaitanya be Radha and Krishna and come down as the Yuga Vatar and walk you around on the soil of Navadri. Yeah. I mean, Krishna is, Krishna is all powerful. In other words, not only Krishna, you can say, how could the Manjuris, like Rupa Manjuri and the, I forget who became uh, Rupa, Go, Rupa Goswami, uh, Jiva Goswami, uh, how, how could they leave? They're, they're personal associates of Krishna and Krishna Loka. How could they come down to earth 500 years ago? Yeah. This is the thing that, that someone needs to understand is that God is not an ordinary man. And the guru is, not, is no different than Krishna. When he comes from Krishna Loka, he is also still in Krishna Loka. Right? Okay. Yes. Do you think that was that person satisfied or not? Well, it's it's up to the realization of the person. Ultimately, you can give any answer you like. No, no, no. About it, does he express satisfaction? Well, we'll see if he types anything else. Okay. Well, it's the next. I, I can go in his mind and you know be like, "Hey, are you satisfied?" Oh, sure. Wow. Well, of course, you can. <laughs> but anyway, what is the next question? Um, we let's have see. two minutes. Yes, yes. Okay, let's see. You know, Rupa, we may go over a little bit if we have to answer questions. But what's the next question? Let's see. Um, let's see what else. No, that's about it. Oh, he said, Prabhupada is not your Diksha guru and cannot give Diksha now. <laughs> he said, what? 
can can Krishna give you a liberation now? <laughs> so you know these are this uh, material thinking that these people have, you know. That, uh, How come Prabhupada is not my Diksha Guru now? Yeah. <laughs> That's not right, Prabhu. Why? You know, Dr. Bhakti said, he reasons ill who say Vaishnavas die, but thou art living still in sound. Vaishnavas die to live and living, spread the holy life around. So if he says that the, 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 the Prabhupada cannot be, the spiritual master is transcendental, he's yeah. not material. How yeah. come you say he cannot give diksha if he's a transcendental servant of Krishna? Chai. That's like saying Krishna, Krishna cannot do anything because he's not here. Yeah. But you're it's... breathing because of Krishna. Yeah. Yeah, these people, I mean, this is the... What does it say? You're digesting because of Krishna. He's, he's saying, I'm speaking to Bhakta Singh since he does not seem old enough to have been given Diksha by Prabhupada. <laughs> Who? He's talking to me. I was speaking to Bhakta Singh since he does not seem old enough to have been given Diksha by Prabhupada. It's not a question of being given Diksha. It's a question of accepting Diksha. Jai. Ronald Singh can accept Diksha, your great, 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 great grandchildren can accept Diksha from Prabhupada. Yeah. <clears throat> Try. All you need to do is go through the, the service. It is the, um, it is the, what, what is the name of the Acharyas? The, the representative, the officiating Acharya. Yeah, the, the officiating Acharya can give a Diksha in behalf of Prabhupada. The officiating Acharya doesn't take on your karma. He simply transfers your karma through the sacrifice to Prabhupada. That will work. Giving it to an earthly guru will not work. Yeah. People have this in, you know, in these meetings we've been having, we have discussed how Prabhupada is living and present right now. So a lot of people that are watching our videos think Prabhupada to be gone and he's no longer present. So this is the well, distinction that the GD, yeah the GBC. GDT wants us to think that Prabhupada is gone. Yes, because they want to think that they've replaced him. Yes, in other so, words, they've taken the transcendental life, the transcendental movement, the transcendental sound vibration of Srila Prabhupada, blocked it out and replaced it with a church exactly replicating the Vatican of the Catholic Church, a group of material men who are making a material religion in the name of Prabhupada. Or you have all the priests that can give you baptism in the name of Jesus. Okay, so they're giving you diksha in the name of Prabhupada. No, Prabhupada is directly here. And we can, the world will be transformed when people hear Prabhupada's sound from every Iskon temple, because everyone in Iskon temple will have memorized the way Prabhupada chants by listening through headphones to Prabhupada chanting. That will be a requirement. Before a person is initiated, they're going to have to be able to chant all of Prabhupada's melodies and all of Prabhupada's mantras and chant everything that Prabhupada did. And then what, they can take initiation. Does that make sense? Yes, Prabhu. And when you sense. walk into an Iskon temple, yes, supposing yes. that Iskon temple people go out in the street and you hear Kirtan roaring with Prabhupada melody, that will lift people up to Krishna Loka. Not crazy stuff, not bang, bang, bang stuff, but the real Kirtan of Lord Chaitanya being delivered through the devotees from Prabhupada. I mean, why the the Jai. GBC having not done that are criminals. Criminals. Yes. <clears throat> because they cheated millions of people out of Prabhupada's direct association through his sound vibration. Okay, is there anything else? Hey, Krishna. Okay, that's about it. So thank you very much to all our devotees for joining. And... Uh, uh, 
Hare Krishna. We'll have our next meeting on Wednesday. Wednesday and Thursday. And then uh Hare Bowl. Please so join our group. Of, yes. Will you be able to set up the meeting on Wednesday and then no. have somebody take it over? No, I, we'll have someone else set up, just like Rupa Manjari or Mohit Prabhu will okay, figure good. something out. Someone no, will sure. Wednesday, Wednesday is Tuesday for me, right? That's no. tomorrow, right? Wednesday is Thursday for you. Uh -huh, Harry Paul. No, no. And, very sorry. And, and, and yes, Mahaprabhu, yes. One day I will I will lead I will lead the meeting one day. Okay, excellent. Yes, I'm ready. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that is wonderful. This is okay. Mr. Goshi. You're Jai. qualified because this is Mr. Goshi. You thank, you to, yes, thank you very much to yes, thank you very much to all our devotees for joining online on <laughs> Facebook and YouTube. Wonderful, lively discussion. If you'd like to get in contact with us, please join our WhatsApp group. It's in the description of the video on YouTube and on Facebook. It's called, if you like to participate live, join here. It's a WhatsApp group. You can come in contact with us. Hare and Krishna. Uh, and uh, that's about it for tonight. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah, absolutely. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. And Mohit, I'm so impressed. Your, hey, well, thank you very much. Mohit! are becoming transparently excellent. Hare Krishna. Thank you, thank you. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare